Um, what's up? It's Paul the Fifth here, and it's like 7:02 on Monday, April the Fifth. About to do the Zoom interview with my new friend. I believe her name is Ocean, and I got connected with her via my cousin ITT, and she's gonna be doing a tarot reading for me. I'm very excited about it. We tried to connect a couple times and third time's charm, right? Let's see what happens. I'm waiting for her to connect. I'm drinking my coffee out of my Pro Tools mug. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul the Fifth, and I'm doing a Zoom interview. And I'm in Nashville, and you're in Illinois, right? At the moment, yes, I am. Okay, and I know you used to live here in Nashville, but uh, connecting with my friend Oshun today. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about like your background, your title, this type of work that you do, and name your business if you have any social media contact information. So if people wanted to get readings, then maybe they could connect with you. I'm just trying to get you business. And uh, Aww, thank you. Uh, you know, in our virtual world today. That's how we do all, all our meetings at the insurance company I work for. Ivan and I even did a Zoom meeting one night. I was hoping you could give us a little bit of your background, how you came to do this type of reading, what your title is, and what it is that you do in helping people in this way. Absolutely. My name, I go by Umilade, Umilade Ra, in fact. Uh, most people call me Oshun because they see that on my social media tags. I like to let it be known so they'll know like where it derived from. As I'm a daughter of Oshun, Oshun is a West African Yoruba deity. Depending on whatever diaspora, whatever part of the diaspora that you're in, the, her name can be pronounced as Osun or Oshun. And so uh, for me, I go by Oshun, Umilade, or Umilade Ra. Oshun came to me about, let's see, my son is six. He was one. So 2015, 2015 was basically when I was introduced to Oshun. Like I said, depending on whatever part of the diaspora that you're in, she can be identified by a variety of names. At that time, she was identified as um, Orozuli. Orozuli is actually a Haitian deity. And so a part of my background derives in two. Is part of it is, you know, Southern Baptist or Christianity um, placements. Oshun is also found within Christianity as well. Just depends, you know, what you're reading from. And then the other part of me is um, my mother and her mother, her grandmother were practitioners of hoodoo. Hoodoo is the American voodoo practices. Orazuli is often found in hoodoo practices as it also has an extension of Haitian Creole practices. So you have hoodoo, voodoo, voodoo, different types of spiritual practices. That's where it came from. So, okay, Orazuli is one of the Haitian deities. In 2015, I lived in Dallas, Texas. I used to meditate and manifest with the group of different spiritual people and so we would meditate during the moon I also follow the moon a lot of women like me even some men know that the moon has a great impact on us yeah. uh -huh. yes the moon and and the sun but so we do the most you do the most manifesting when it comes to the moon so you have to follow that and that woman it's my divine birthright to follow that to stay on point and and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a birth giver, so yeah. <laughs> so, so we would do, you know, different manifestation things. And so in 2015, I remember late September, early October, uh, we were venerating Urazuli. And I did it actually unaware of how potent she was. It's just like, you know, I'm just like doing it for, you know, my, my business. I'm doing it for my healing process or whatnot. I'm not really doing it to you know, the maximum of what I know. But when you when you work together with different people and we all on the same wave and we're all manifesting with it, it's an explosive experience. And so I felt like for all of us to be trying to channel with her because it was her, it was her time. Like October is like her time. That's her period where you venerate her. We're all manifesting with this energy. The results of that was both good and bad. You know, it pushed me into like this, 
this great transformation. I was already doing spiritual practices, but how I found Oshun was through Orazuli. Um, and then that year followed by a lot of other plenty of years that kind of just was like pushing me into the role that I am in now. Orazuli is synonymous to, like I said, the West African Nigerian deities. That's where the Orishas come in. Orazuli is a Haitian Luo. That's L-W-A. Oshun is a West African Orisha. O-R-I-S-A or O-R-I-S-H-A. The, the Orishas come from West African Nigeria land. So it's a whole bunch of them. It's, it's over 400 Orishas. However, there are seven most powerful ones and Oshun is one of them. My spiritual practice is the Yoruba West African Ifa practice. That's my practice. However, the Orishas are, they are a part of that. That's where they come from. Whenever I entered into Ifa, I was going through like this really, I guess, really sensitive time in my life as a mother and as a woman. I didn't want to exist anymore. I didn't want to exist anymore. I always used to like run and travel. So I just remember, you know, 2015, 2016, uh, after the incident in Dallas, I went home to visit. I didn't feel um, like I resonated anymore. Even at home, I, I remember just telling my mom, like, I can't be here. And then I just remember, like, things had, were falling apart. I told her that things would be falling apart, and they did. So then I went, and I went on by my way. And I was like, I'm just going to drive to California because I want to meet my dad. I know that I haven't heard from him. There's a chance that he might be in California. If not, he's in Kentucky, but I'm going to go to California. So I drove all the way to California from Illinois with my son. And he was one at the time. There's one going on two. Him and I, we, we drove. My daughter, she stayed with her papa. And so, so she can go to school. I just knew like, yeah, I, I, need, I need to rediscover myself. I need to figure out what is going on. I'm going to get connected to my dad. That's probably the missing component. <laughs> so I went all the way to California. I was like, I'm gonna find a house. This location, I wasn't even aware. It navigated me all the way to Mexico. So I ended up in Mexico. And so I lived in Mexico for a few months. And while I was there, just being in another, another country outside of you know, where I'm from, what I'm used to, it just really pushed me to discover things, things about myself that I was not known to. While I was there, I would cry a lot. <laughs> I would cry a lot. I had my deck, my deck of cards that I normally divine with. And it was a fresh deck of cards. I just remember like, I got to figure out, you know, I'm going to figure out how to, how to do it. I'm going to tap into the cards. This particular deck was the Orisha deck. And so while I didn't use the book much, I just was like playing with the cards. And as I would play with the cards, you know, Oshun would continue to pop up. Oshun always popped up. And so I, then I started like researching who she was. And in addition to researching, you know, like on my social media, I would get like these inboxes from Baba Lowell's and they would be like um, trying to offer me services or whatnot. And um, so one day I accepted one of the, the, the invitations to, you know, be to receive a reading. So the Baba Lau did a reading for me. I didn't tell him what I was doing. I didn't tell him how I felt or anything. And he immediately told me that Oshun had a message for me. And he told me that Oshun wants for me to, you know, to not be so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. And and it was it was like, in my mind, I'm thinking like, I got so much stuff going on. This is all that you have to tell me. <laughs> you know, you get a reading and you think that, you know, they're going to tell you so much, you know, they're going to answer all the questions for you or something. But something as simple as just saying, like, don't beat up on yourself. You know, at the time, even though I wasn't receptive as easily, it was just necessary for me to see it that way. But I had to change a lot of my perception. I took that. I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't do too much with my cards or anything. I didn't continue on because I ended up in a relationship with the African. So, so now I'm thinking like, dang, here we go. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I ever like, but I've ever dated, you know, outside, you know, American or Black American men or whatnot. And here goes the African. He had no, you know, practice whatsoever in the spiritual stuff that I did. And so to me, I was just like, I was hiding it. I would hide my spiritual practice from him. Even though we were in a relationship for like a year and a half and lived together, a lot of me just felt like still a lot was missing. Mm -hmm. And so after that relationship ended, 
you know, I went on to further my journey and just discovering myself. Um, I did take on some um, therapy. And in, when I took up therapy, I actually knew her from premarital counseling because he and I, we were like going down that path. Mm-hmm. But she also did family counseling. So afterwards, I, I offered, no, I accepted to receive offerings from her, like counseling offerings. So I remember sharing with her, you know, where I come from and what I've been doing. And one time she walked me out to the car and she seen my deck of cards in the uh, window. So she was like, oh, yeah, I have something to tell you. I want to give you the contact to an Ianifa that I met. I know that you could you know, benefit greatly from her. So she connected me to the Ianifa and the Babalao that is in Vegas. And that's how I found my Ile. When I was connected to her, I was further confirmed about being a daughter to Oshun. In addition to the daughter of Shango, which is another um, Orisha within the Ifa um, spiritual tradition. I like to tell people now, whenever we find Ifa, it's not something that is like we choose. Like It's not something that is like, oh, we're going to find your compatibility. It's not that. Like the Orishas are something. In Ifa, I'll even just like beyond Orishas, like Ifa is something that we all are birth with. It's just a lifestyle. So life is a way of life. It's the way of seeing things. Yoruba and the Isheshe tradition and the things that come with it, I started to learn how we are, we choose our path before we even arrive here on this plane. We choose it. Before we enter into the physical, we make a decision. We decide what path we want to be on. We have heaven and then we have the egg bay. Each of us have an egg bay member, meaning we're split in two. So I have, if I can just explain in heaven, we decide what path we want to be on. One of us, one of us as egg bay, you know, child, we say, which one is going to go to the earth to complete our destiny? So one of us is sent down. So <laughs> when we get sent down, we're also sent with an Orisha. So our Orishas come with us. We all have a masculine and a feminine Orisha. For me, I believe that my path was chosen by what it is that I had come here to complete, whatever destiny I come here to complete. And I have the help of the Orishas and I have the help of Ifa as my tools that comes with the messengers. And so I, it's just a matter of tapping into those things. And I believe that Ifa and my spiritual practice have greatly provided me with those tools. And that's, that's how I came into this practice. <laughs> E5 started 2013, 2014. However, being a spiritualist, that was at the age of eight was when I came into the note because of my mom um, showing me different things and having a library of books and different practices. My auntie is a Christian. She's a Christian devotee. She has always spoke to me, you know, spoke life into me and showed me different ways of how to identify where the healing has to take place. So I'm really big on that. And even in my own personal life, having to figure out how to heal from certain things that makes it just pushes me to be more of how I am it just makes sense for me yeah very cool oh there's a couple points that resonated with me in that Uh, the first thing was this year because for me 2015 is when I moved here to Nashville that had great importance and I was trying to find myself here as someone in the arts entertainment musician engineer producer type stuff I'm new here here I am with two or three friends in this city of half a million people. And I'm trying to find my way. Mm -hmm. I've kind of dealt with a lot of similar struggles and finding out things, Mm -hmm. but I came to know Ivan and he's who got us connected. And Uh uh, I thought what you said about going to California to meet your father was a connection. And that's something that's been huge for me is just connecting with others, especially over the last year with like this whole isolation time, this type stuff Mm. is a great way for me to still stay connected with people. Even though we're states away, we're doing this Mm. digitally and it's just like, you're right there. It's awesome. I've got this feeling of a connection and it's so cool. And I love Mm. how you have found out all that stuff about yourself and this whole coming to know Oshun and just that name and getting to that point. I've grown up in a very spiritual background, I was raised in the UCC church for 11 years, been doing the whole non-denominational church. So I've got a pretty uh, deep history, thick history and rich history of faith and everything. So as far as like your business and social media, can they like find you on 
Facebook and would you care if I put Life with Link in the description mm -hmm. so people can contact you and do something like this and get some reading? Yeah, I'll be happy to. I'll be more delighted to do so. My Facebook is Oshun Yami Umilade, or you could also find Oshun's River, Oshun Umilade's River, or on Instagram. And then with your business, I know you kind of said that you do more of the like tapping into things. Can you tell me like, I think when we talked before, there's like, what, four major types of readings? Yes. Kind of break those down so that if mm -hmm. anyone's like wanting to get an idea of what this is, what those are, mm -hmm. how it can help them kind of come to a revelation or find the answers that they need yeah. that they're seeking. Okay. Okay, so there are four different types of divination tools. And the ones that I use, it would be, I use tarot with cards. Mm -hmm. I've been exploring also coffee divination. There's also um, candle divination. So okay. candle reading. I love drinking some coffee. <laughs> um, there's also candle divination. And then I have Ifa divination, which has so many different, it's so, whew, it is so, fluent and versatile in terms of like the e5 divination what tools that i use in terms of that would be to divine with ob or bitter cola nut how i do my divination is i'll offer a tarot card reading and for the client or whomever it is that i'm using it for i always tell them to have their questions prepared because my tarot card reads the energy I read the energy, I go ahead and interpret it. But then once I'm done doing that, I like to pick the person's mind. What exactly is it that you are you trying to find? If you have questions, then, I, then we can go back and forth with your questions and I can throw OB and we can get yes or no answers. And also one thing about throwing OB or consulting with E5 is that there always has to be, when you open E5, you open that container, you have to close it. Sometimes E5 won't close unless you give an offering. That offering can come in many different things. The offerings will consist of things like food or throwing a ceremony, seven day, 14 day, 40 day fasting. However, if it was me going to my ear or my ELA or something, then that could consist of something. Most of the time, the initiates, they would do like Babalao or high priest, like they would do offerings such as animal sacrifices. That's the part of Ifa that most people are not ready for. As for me, that is my practice. Cool. So what was your title again? For me, I'm a Omo. That's M O M. I am a. I'm in training to become an initiate. Various different types of initiations. I know that the one that I'm about to do this year is the Oshun Priestess. I'll be initiated as a Oshun Priestess. Okay, very cool. Good luck with all that. I support you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank you. I guess if we can go ahead and tap into one of these divine readings yeah. for those of you that might be watching this my good friend ivan got us connected i've been going through a lot every time it's a new season the place i work is an insurance company and i believe you worked there at one point things are picking up stress levels uh last week because of that stress um i almost died and I wanted to tell you about that and get your mm -hmm. uh, input and thoughts. It was cool how Ivan connected us. We've tried to connect a couple of times, March 28th. And then I think last week, a couple of times, and then yesterday. And then here we are again. My questions I have for you initially were just like very general. Yeah. For those of you that maybe don't know, I was adopted from Mumbai. Hence my picture of the Taj Mahal. And then this little Asian painting here is kind of keeping my roots of who I am. I wanted to tap deeper into that today. My general questions I have for you, I was like, I've always thought my grandparents were my guardian angels. I asked, are my ancestors with me? And yes, we confirmed that, but I wanna see what this reading taps into. I have some deeper questions for you about some of my past, some relationships, and just a couple other things. And I'm excited to see what I might get to learn here. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'd be happy to, since um, we've been talking, I have been shuffling my tarot cards. Mm -hmm. As I said before, you know, I would love to give you a general reading just yeah. to start off. Before you do get, before we go into that, I do want to just really give a shout out to Evan because Evan is so dope to me. 
<laughs> he's so dope. And he's been a great friend ever since I've met him. I just remember the way I met him. I was at work at a sharing on a break, like a lunch break. And I was doing a live reading on Facebook. And I'm in my phone talking and divining. I can I can hear people like passing by through the hallway, but then I hear him. He goes past the entryway to the door and then he comes all the way back. He like has like this big smile in his voice. He's like, hey, who are you? <laughs> that's, that's awesome. He's so excited or whatever. And I was like, hi, I'm Ubin Lade. <laughs> <laughs> he had this huge spark of energy about him and it's like no matter what like that energy he comes with it all the time even if he's asking a question he still has that same upbeat tone and stuff about him it's, <laughs> it's, it's even if he's if he's mad he's not he's not mad to like angry or anything he's just mad to like it's a passion about him and it's it's so <laughs> it's just so interesting and unique to me <laughs> For sure. He and I met in 2015, kind of like your initial connection, trying to find your father. So we met at a phone store that we were working at. There was two locations that we had within the area. And I walk in one day, he's like, what's up, man? I'm like, how you doing? And I said, my name is Paul. And the first thing, the first thing he said to me was, man, I am so good to have another brother working with me here. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm glad to be that guy. And then I found out later, he didn't like me for whatever reason. He thought I was strange and weird. And I am in my own way. He's weird. <laughs> but he's different. But because yeah. of these unique differences, it's actually mm -hmm. created mm -hmm. a really cool bond and friendship. Like you said, he's always passionate about everything that he does. He comes with excitement, just enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. He's just been the solid rock that I've needed here in this time of being in Tennessee and in Nashville he's taught me so much. And I'm so thankful that he's got us connected. Thanks for that. Shout out ITT. You, you deserve that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up so i'm gonna get started now i don't have a tripod with me i am using my hands so i'm pulling cards with one hand but i'm i got this you know what i'm saying i do this surrounding energy spirit guys ancestors for the last time i remember on o'shea e day normally every four days and yesterday was e day we normally pour libation how i talk to you how i told you how to do it with that prayer we normally do that whenever we're opening up e i did do this morning you did it you have it with you i have it with me right now and i know okay. in some of our talks we had talked about i needed to kind of open my mind up change some of my ways Mm -hmm. change it hard especially mindsets if you've been in certain habits it's difficult and I found myself yesterday reverting to some of those things I'm like you know what that conversation I gotta I gotta change what I'm doing so I chilled out I remember you were telling me about on one side you've got your male and your female parts of things and I was relating that to myself as a man but how can I use some of that feminine energy into how I present things and I had some situations yesterday where I used that thought process I was like you know what let me be more understanding in this situation and let me be more helpful and compassionate deep down I'm like man I don't want to deal with this <laughs> But I was like, you know what, let me put that mental mindset on. And I was able to get through that situation with more of a change in mindset. So that was pretty cool. I yeah. listened to you and I put some of that into <laughs> action as difficult <laughs> as it was. Mm -hmm. I, I made learning and growing in this process, even though it's only been like a week. So it's very cool for yeah. me to be able to share that with you now. All it takes is a small seed. If you were listening and you were in church and had your practices in faith, what they talk about the mustard seed. Yeah. All it takes a small little mustard seed. <laughs> I say I love that and I also see that you had pink on so when we got on the camera today and I see you had the pink on I was like okay that's the that's the, tapping into some femininity there it is let me tell you the story about that for anybody that's watching here so the pink comes from when I was back in Indiana I was a kid playing basketball in our driveway my parents neighbor was an attorney and he had this big house on the hill and all this stuff and he's like he comes down one day and he's like hey how would you like to learn how to take care of my estate, my yard, and just generally watch the house? 
house for me when I go out of town. He's like, mm-hmm. I'll pay you handsomely. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do it. I'm an older brother. I have a younger sister. And so he kind of played that masculine role for me, kind of be like a big brother that I never have. So he taught me all this stuff about landscaping. He gave me a key to his house. I would get his mail, make sure everything was taken care of, take care of his pets. He had a bird. In the house, it was Bob. And Bob just really took an interest in me as a kid. He didn't have any children of his own. But Bob being this attorney, always dressed in nice, wearing suits, mm-hmm. always sharp. He would wear these pink shirts and ties. Bob passed away in 2013, but he left an impression on me. He left a legacy. And that's why I call my studio Legacy Studios, because I'm wanting to leave an impression. When my time is gone from this earth, I want people to know that I loved on them. I try to encourage and inspire them. Uh Bob did that for me. He wore Uh these pink shirts. So here I am trying to kind of come full circle. Bob used to wear pink, left an impression on me. I'm doing that now. And Uh here I am doing this reading with you, hopefully trying to shed a little light and show some encouragement on this thing that we call life. So thank you. I love that because... You know, like a part of a huge, a huge, I say, goal or like your mission on this realm is to definitely make the world better than it was when you arrived. I really appreciate that. So thank you. I appreciate him for doing what he needed to do for you during that time of your life. And then I appreciate you for being courageous enough and to be able to carry that same impression. We all here for a purpose. Let's do it. Let's do this. I am ready. If you don't mind, I'm going to take some notes. I have my water bottle and my bowl. I don't know if I need Mm -hmm. that today or not, but I came prepped. Let's go ahead and do it. Definitely. I'm going to switch screens really quick just so I can pull that note up. I'm just going to read it. Iba alojo oni. Iba ori. Iba maararun. Iba baba rendo. Iba yeye Jacqueline. Iba baba. Iba to pause baba. What's your dad's name and your mother's name? Oh, Michael and Deborah. And what and, and also Iba to his biological parents and their ascendants as well. Iba Arumila, Iba 200 Arumile, who sit on the right hand side of Olodumare. Iba 200 plus one Irumile, who sit on the left side of Olodumare. Iba Agbun Ire Gun, the priest in heaven. Iba to Aluos, Aluos, such as Ifayomi, Baba Orifemi, Baba Shola, Baba Omisosin, Tyro Milade, Agbola, and Ifa Dunke. Iba to the teachers of Paul. State their name. Michael and Deborah. Okay. And then Iba to all of those who have also come and taught in any other form or way whether it just be small, light, or just for a season. And so as we pour the libation, we're now open a container and so that you'll be present with us in the message that it is that we have to receive today. Thank you so much, Ashe. All right, there we go. You poured all that water, huh? I know that's right. Perfect timing. Yes! You know, one thing about me is maybe this is tapping into my feminine side. I'm not sure, but I love nature. I love being on water. Ivan and I went to the lake the other day. It overflowed here. So we got kind of like the water coming in from the dam. So water is very much part of just like my spiritual side of me. That's good. That's good. You're giving me a lot of Oshun vibes in the last week or two since we've been talking. That's for sure. All right, let's go. Surrounding energy for Paul. Four of air, a message from earth. Five of fire, two of fire, running energy messages for Paul. Um, I would say that I think that before anything that you start, right, anything that you start over comes with, you know, a transformation when you decide to make a change. Transformation could be in the form of losing some things that could have been, some things that you might have felt were like super valuable monetary, right? There's been like some misconceptions 
of things in the past that you thought that you that you trusted, that you were confident in, those things have or are merging into something more prosperous. They're merging into something that's more substantial. So you're doing away with the old form of thinking. Instead of having this mindset that you have been left out in the cold or being attacked, mm-hmm. that that is changing instead of seeing things in a perception of woe is me it's like you're taking these old forms these old worrying ways and you're transforming it into something that is valuable that you can offer to others in order to bring forth a different experience a different light a different form of energy like a magical experience and and it is in turn offering you something that you wouldn't have been able to gain from another person, like another being. It's the inner work that it seems like what's going on. Is you taking your, changing your mindset to offer something more valuable. And in turn, it is positioning you to be more attractive and confident. And in doing so, of course, you are having victory over enemies. Enemies could also be in the form of your own self-limiting beliefs, those voices that you create in your mind. This also is providing you with this experience, almost as if you're walking or creating like this temple of yourself. It's a safe place that you're able to exist within and entering into this new palace, this new temple, this new kingdom mentally you no longer see like oh yeah <laughs> look at the picture this is the picture of it okay that's very interesting that you say that because this is a picture of the Taj Mahal mm-hmm. that was a temple and a shrine built for basically a tomb for this guy's wife so it's very interesting that you mentioned that and I keep that as a reminder of my Indian heritage and who I am so that's I love that, I love that. Wow. This, <laughs> and this temp, and this here this card has a image of a lion and then on the other side there's an image of a male lion and a lioness a female lion so for me that's saying it's almost like entering into a palace or a kingdom and they're both governing the door to this sacred place that's the feminine and that masculine energy that I was telling you about that brings both that balance. And so absolutely, I do agree with you as far as the temple. This place does not allow for you to bring like these this type of thinking. This type of thinking right here is the ten of air. And it's almost as if you're like this lack, this scarcity, these type of thought, they're done. They don't exist. You're stepping in on faith. You're trusting and you're no longer operating in that way. So that's amazing. In it, here comes Yamaya showing. Yamaya is the mothering Orisha. She governs large or broad streams of water. She brings like beauty. She's like the sister of Oshun and the rest of the other feminine Orishas. But she's the mother of all. She's more so like the one, like if you think about your mom, like she's like that person and the wife, the head wife in, in charge. Like she has that level of confidence. She's bringing you like this nurturing energy. That's saying that she's offering that to you. And so she's restoring these different parts of who you are. She's going to be offering that to you. I believe it's going to be related to your childhood. The next card that follows behind it is a picture of a tree with a nest in it. And the nest has a bunch of birds. Their mouths are open as if they're waiting for their mom to come and bring them food. For me, it's just like waiting, like you're you're waiting and you're open to receive that from her, from that mother energy. There's also an offering to bring you to much calmer streams of water. You know, this is air. This is the air sign card. It's the six. That's all thinking and communication. So you could be going to a place, like you said, y'all recently went to the lake. So that shows up and it's a transformation form. You have the outcast. I remember he showed up the last time in your reading. Outcast is an individual who is very confident and he knows he's a prize. So he knows that he's, he has a, he know he come with this unconventional way of thinking and way of living. However, it is, it's attractive and people, people gravitate towards him. 
he is not one of those people that you can just like like keep captured and stuff like that so he's he's a hot shot look at him he's a hot shot have the nine of water this way of thinking this this transformation this mindset is going to be abundant it is it's going to come to you at a surprise like something that is like i know i worked hard for it i know that it's on the way and it's going to come and when it comes like i said it's going to be like in the night overnight success type of thing overnight successful here goes the gnomes and the dwarves card that's the wisdom that you inherit in gaining this new knowledge this new lifestyle you're able to look back at your ways from the past and bring it to where you are today maximize on it in a profitable way and he showed up twice it is acts that you remind yourself constantly of why you chose to, to take on this path. Because if you continue to move forward in a place of scarcity or fear or lack or anything like that, your vibration, your energy speaks first. And that can be easily read and it can be used as a target or ammunition for yourself. So stay guarded and trust in yourself and trust here goes that remember when, the, when we first did our reading that same card just showed up here again you you don't you can't really afford to move about in a way like you did in your younger years because you've come too far this mental clarity the way of thinking all of this this lifestyle that you're embarking on now you should think about what it is that you want to gain from it remember i told you before about exploring the things that you desire Truly, truly being honest with yourself, what it is that has limited you in achieving those things. In doing so, you also want to identify how you would like the outcome of that to be because you have great potential and you have the power to be able to manifest those things. You gain a lot, but you have to, like you cannot afford to have any slight trace of that old way of thinking and insecurity. So you can't afford that, okay? Newness, a new beginning. That's a whole mind, body, spirit transformation, a new beginning. And it's internal and it's external. And then you have the ace of earth strategy. Be very, very analytical in your approach. Be also practical in your approach. It's going to bring you balance. Message from earth and fire. You have a lot of work action-wise, a lot of opportunities in terms of action in places where where things may have once lied dormant. Those things are now being awoken. They're becoming very fast. It'll be happening in like this explosive way. Also, there's opportunity for trust, vulnerability. So there's an opportunity of love, balance, harmony that will also present itself. Trust is something that you want to explore. If you have issues with trust or if you have issues with being vulnerable, those things you want to, you want to address them, acknowledge them, whether it be journaling or talking and finding more deeper depth, soulful, meaningful connections. Could be one, it could be plenty. However, I think that it would be wise of you to use it as an opportunity to gain confidence in the connections that you meet with other people so that that's something that you truly want want mm -hmm. presents it then you're able to nurture it you're able to give it the attention that you need without bleeding on to it or self-sabotaging yourself and because of these self-limited beliefs that that come from the past that serve you no good during this time sacrifice is being asked to you again full body transformation and also the card that shows up right there is an air sign card is the star card so that could be like an aquarius or something that shows up or it could be an air sign libra gemini aquarius that could possibly be someone you also have capricorn here that could present itself like uh, maybe a connection from a capricorn or you could also be dealing with capricorn like energy like somebody who comes that may look like they are the prize. They might look like that person that's like, oh my God, this is like wonderful. This is like the person of my dreams or something like that. However, it could turn into a devil-like energy. Why? Because you still have residue. When we're dealing with energy, when we're dealing with healing, we all have residue that just wants to sit and linger around. And that's why it's important for you to stay super tight on removing those self-limiting beliefs and stuff. 
or those doubtful things, all of that stuff, shadow like projections, all of that type of stuff. You want to make sure you address it and address it head on so that when it shows up, you know exactly who it is. <laughs> or it could be an energy of your own. You want to also keep in mind of some of the things that you say to people. So it doesn't be misread or misinterpreted. And then you have to apologize. Again, Eshu is one of the Orishas and Eshu shows up. He's a, he's a role opener. So he's opening all four paths. And in those four paths, again, the fire element shows up. That's a new beginning. The message from air shows up. A new beginning where you're able to merge these times into your present day so that it will manifest and create something new. And you're able to teach from a place of what you used to do to what you're doing today. Do not self-sabotage yourself. Hard work, dedication, bring about new mindset transformation. You will not be feeling enslaved anymore. Continue to work on your plan, your strategy. You do music, so continue to sharpen your skills in that. Continue to sharpen your skills in your video production work. Continue to sharpen your skills in meeting people and having relationships. So communicating and working together and knowing just what it looks like to do that. And then your ancestors are behind you. They're with you during this time. Like I said, another air sign. So it just keeps repeating itself. It keeps repeating itself and starting over. Back to the air sign again. And it's at the ace of air. Maybe there's uh, something that you want to speak, you want to say, initiate that. It's telling you to just do that. Say it. Say what it is that you have on your mind. Make the connections. Send a letter. Whatever it is that you want to do, make the connection. Two of water. That's um, a reunion, a reconnection. You're coming and you're meeting somebody, you're probably reconciling with somebody or maybe clearing something up to where you're like, hey, I was going through this and I think I'm in a better space now or I know now that I'm ready to step into a new relationship if I want to do it. whatever, however it may be, you're ready to do that. And don't be shy to do it. Let's see, let's, let's work together, community, and have fun in doing it. And all things are just going to flow together for you. Yeah. Oshun shows up. The high priestess shows up. You're also being supported by your community. Continuation. Very prosperous energy. Sacrifice is showing up. Three of fire is showing up. So again, options, opportunities. After you take your own sacrifice, you see what it takes for you to do the things you need to do. Many opportunities are presenting itself. Many different offerings are presenting itself. You're also going to be able to catch up on some financial things too. That's going to show up. And then abundance, world transformation is not just going to be you internally, but it's also going to start to shift the outside. So maybe your home or maybe places that you normally go and function in like things your whole perception is going to change because you decided to do the work you decided to do the work from the inside out and then you start sowing seeds and now you're just gaining full abundance and your visions are being heightened your perception is being heightened you you walk out with a sense of pride and courage and strength and so those ways where you might have thought that you were drowning or just only surviving they are no more they are no more so for the most part this seems very very victorious in my eyes but it starts from the inside out it starts from the inside out that is your reading well thank you first of all mm -hmm. a lot of notes like three pages worth that... i just did the whole I just did the whole deck. The, the whole, whole deck. deck. Just, yeah. Well, I, again, am rather mind blown, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm finding the encouragement. I realize I've been in a dark place. I've been stuck up in this apartment for like the last year because I've got a compromised immune system and I don't go anywhere because I don't want to go out and get sick. I mean, I go to the grocery mm -hmm. store and I go to the studio and mm -hmm. I don't go to church or attending online. This has given me a lot of encouragement, inspiration, a lot of ideas to follow through with. And it's really made me zone in on myself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how some of the 
habits and mindsets and the ways of doing things over the last year in isolation have to kind of be broken. Just like you said, the new mindset and continue working on the plan and the path that I have. And it's like, it makes sense. I know what I got to do for myself as far as an individual in changing those ways. So man, I feel like a totally new person. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that. I think that it's amazing that you're able to receive and be receptive to what is being offered. So we've basically done tarot card readings like one, two, three times so far in what, the last week? I think so, yeah. It's the 28th. Yeah, today's the 6th. So yeah, we can have whatever two weeks this I love it. And then you're already feeling transformation. So I do thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm so glad that I haven't got connected. I do have a couple of questions if you have some time for it. I have time for that. You said that you're going to be more descriptive, correct? Yes. One of the first times we connected, or maybe I think it was Sunday when we connected, we tried to do mm-hmm. the videotape thing and I messed up because I forgot to turn the audio on so anyhow Mm -hmm. I had asked generalities the one thing about me is I've always been a night owl like I just Mm -hmm. can't sleep too well Mm -hmm. and I'm almost wondering is that something to do with the spiritual side of me just because from three to five is like a creative hour for most people and I'm almost wondering is that a time frame where I need to just hone in and talk to the creator. Is that a time for me just to get myself right? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. That's absolutely yes. <laughs> That's the time for you to build the connection with your higher self and the creator, divine source. Okay, very mm-hmm. cool. I thought so, but just wanted that confirmation. So as far as the relationship, I know you said that there was potential and you tapped more into that today. I've mm-hmm. always had this thought process that I would meet that someone either in church or through music. Do you mm-hmm. have any thoughts on that or do you have any ideas there or is that just something that has to come naturally and just let happen? I believe that the connection is going to come through a spiritual, more spiritual acquaintance or intervention. Of how I believe that it showed. It, I got an infinite yes in terms of spiritual, and it it showed two, three times, same thing, flipping over two or three times in the same way. <laughs> so it was a spiritual thing, but not the music part. So I believe that in traveling throughout this spiritual journey, that you'll be connected with someone who aligns with what it is that you are seeking, and you both will be able to help one another. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. My other question was, I've been given a second chance of life with this adoption. Last week, I called you like right after it happened, but for those of you that maybe don't know, I have got over the last few months, and you told me this, that I've been just overworking myself and doing too much. I got myself to a point of immense stress. And mm-hmm. a week ago today, today's April six so it was last Tuesday trying to go to sleep my mind's all over the place I'm stressed out when I lay down nature is my zen place I think I may have told you that I'm sleeping I'm in that in-between zone place where you're kind of falling asleep but you're not sure what's going on well I had this kind of like dreamlike state where I'm walking through this park here in Nashville Centennial Park and the next thing I know my body just collapses like there's no pain it just shut down because of all this stress and pressure well i'm laying in bed and the next thing i know i am laying here and my body is just like i can feel it like i am just in bed i can just like i'm talking to you now it's just like my mind and spirit is just like raised from this body and i'm above myself and i can see all through my mm-hmm. apartment and then the next thing I know I'm getting like an overview of things and I'm getting shot straight up into the air at a super fast speed that I've never experienced and it was all dark it's like a portal getting transformed from 
one dimension to the other almost. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not in my physical body. It's just my mind and my ears. Like I can sense, but I'm not like in my whole body. And I have this idea, where am I? I didn't know where I was at. I'm like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to look around and I can't find anything. And I'm like, I'm dying. This is it. And I was like, God, am I dying right now? I was like, God, I can't die. I'm not ready. I've got too much living to do. There's so much cool stuff I want to experience. And I said, I, I can't leave my mom, dad, my niece, India. And then things just went blank. And then emotional, just like uncontrollable sobbing. And then the next thing I know, I just like come to in my bed. I'm laying down. I just wake up. Like if you ever see the people in the hospital where they give them the the, the jolt, the, the the shock, like the defibrillator thing, they go over like that. It's just like that. Mm -hmm. I wake up and I'm like sweating. I'm drenched in sweat and I'm looking around. I don't know what's going on. And like my vision is like trying to come back. I hear these voices and I see these beings, but I don't know what they are, if it's angels or what it is. But then... Mm -hmm across the way I'm seeing like talk about this light so I'm seeing this light just shining down and it looks like it's a portal too that these people talk about when you know Jesus ascended to heaven there's this light and it's like so powerful and just pure throughout the whole process I wasn't scared I felt mm -hmm. confident in the last week I've said I've kind of changed my ways I've looked at things differently I feel a sense of maybe a little bit more purpose. I feel content. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried mm -hmm. about finances. I'm talking to my folks a lot more. I'm communicating with the ones that I know are on my team and behind me. We're connecting now. The ones that don't wanna be in my circle, cool. If you don't wanna talk to me, just whatever. It, like, it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't trip about all the IT issues at work getting yelled out by customers, like it didn't bother me. I was wondering what your interpretation of that might be. To me, while I'm hearing you talk about this tired, the sense of you, you were having this dream, your body getting tired, and then you feel like it's levitating, and then you get shot up into the air. To me, I don't know about you, but when I heard, the, heard you say that, I just immediately thought about two things. One, I thought about a person dying. I don't know how you feel about the concept of dying. For me, that's a beautiful experience. I've explored the idea of death for a long time since I was a little girl. And I don't fear death because I know that everything serves a point of existence. And when that time exceeds itself, you should be willing and ready to go on to the next realm. Yeah, can you um, have just a second, my quick time. This is one problem I have. Technology issues everywhere. <laughs> I know. Man, this is crazy. Four days worth of trying to connect on my technology issues, but I'll get it figured out. My thoughts and the way that I view death is not from a place of fear. I know I told you I'm preparing to be initiated as an Oshun priestess, but I'm also in the process of doing or becoming an Egungun priest as well. They deal with the dead. I'm also I'm a birth doula, and I'm also planning to become a death doula as well. I'm okay with the idea of death. Is I think that is beautiful. I think that with everything with everything in life that serves a purpose, it has a time period. When it exceeds, it's time to go ahead and move forward to the next process of your life. Just thinking about it in terms of spiritual or mental aspect of things, when we are here, we are existing in a physical, true indeed. But if we are. If we looked at it from a spiritual aspect, you're dreaming, you're asleep, you're resting. And then all of a sudden you get shot up in the air. To me, even when you said that, I thought about birth. I thought about the woman. I thought about the womb. Most babies don't even know where they are when they're in the womb. They're just there and it's dark. And then eventually as they senses and stuff starts to grow, they start to see light. When you're in the womb or you're going back to the womb, you're going back to a dark place of your life. And in that dark place of your life, that's when you're supposed to identify 
things about your past, the things about, you know, why, what is my purpose? What did I come here to do? You know, you start to identify those things. And so I don't see a, a reason to be afraid of those things. You, you come into your fullness when you do that. So it's good. Then you say you went from that to, to what happened after that? After, after you got shot up in the, in the air, like this dark period. would have felt like just one second. And I'm going through this portal like at a speed of light. It's crazy. I'm trying to find out up and down. There's no sense of direction. And I was just like, God, am I dying? And then I just started saying, I can't go yet. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have too much living to do. And I just started weeping. Mm -hmm. and I just came back too in my body, waking up just in the sweat. Everything you've been telling me today and in the last week, it's been new things are about to come. It's going to happen quickly. It's going to happen when I don't expect it. Just in the last two days, Ivan's called me. We've had conversations about stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing these other things within my life that are starting to open up and like manifest. So I, I feel like it was an eye opener. It was a chance to let me know with my spiritual side and spirituality like you said, I got to get rid of these old ways, start making these changes. I'm excited to do that. And <laughs> a lot of living to do. There's so much I want to experience and take Absolutely. on. Absolutely. I, I agree with you with that. This card right here is like the Holy Trinity card. It's just coming around full circle to, and, and offering a rebirth experience. And that card just happened to show up while I was shuffling. Very cool. Well... Yeah. I don't know how much time my computer is going to allow me to have before it crashes. I feel like I got everything that I wanted to know, that I wanted to find out. So I have gotten that clarity. I mm -hmm. know what I got to do within myself as far as making those changes. I'm excited to see what comes. I can't wait to share with you some of the successes and how I'm going from this point over here on this new journey and getting to this point over here. So I'm excited. Yeah. I thank you so much for enlightening me, spending time with me and encouraging me. And hopefully somebody will get encouragement too, or maybe contact you and try to get some readings and you can share some light and encouragement with them too. So thank you. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you so much for allowing me into your space. And I look forward to also being a part of it as well. And just being there, I'm totally here for you. So I appreciate it. Thank you. It's about time for me to get to work. So <laughs> I'll let you go here, but thanks so much. I'm going to put all this together and try to put something of it with what I have. So <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll shoot you a text a little bit later or something. Okay, all, all right. right, peace. Bye.